Okay, going into week two, it's time to talk about how I grade. Now, what you have in front of you is the discussion rubric, which I've already sent to you, and which is also located in the uh, most important stuff section of the content page. This is just the general rubric, which you should have already read. Um, it gives you all the basics for it. But what I want to talk about now that we've done the first discussion is exactly how I'm going to grade it based on this rubric. Now, the rubric's pretty straightforward. Um, all of this, again, you can read. This is all your examples. Notice, again, APA style for internal citations and the Works Cited page. Both of those linked with how to do it. I did notice that a number of you did not use internal citations, so that's going to count off. Um, but let me go ahead, get down here to the actual rubric itself. There are four categories in the rubric, general knowledge, critical thinking, peer comments, and citation. And I'm going to start here with exactly what I'm looking for in these things. General knowledge is going to be based on how well you set up the general background or whatever the question is. In this case, we're talking about the Denosovans. So your general knowledge is going to be demonstrated in this particular discussion based on using your textbook and on the Britannica article. Both of those were basically the background information um, for who the Denosovans were, what the time period was, uh, all the different things that were going on at the time. That's going to be effectively what I'm going to be looking for there. The better you discuss the development of humanity in this period, um, the, the more you give me context historically, the better off that grade's going to be. Now, critical thinking is how you're going to bring in and integrate the other sources, particularly your multimedia source, and in this case, the Harari. Uh, as many of you observed in the course of the discussion, the Harari actually does a whole lot with that. And in fact, those of you who discussed the two big uh, theories that he puts out there, uh, the extinction theory and the... Um, the replacement theory, um, that's a big part of what the whole issue is around the Denosovans and the Neanderthals and a bunch of other different groups that we're just beginning to discover that coexisted at the same time as Homo sapiens. And of course, uh, Harari discusses in depth uh, basically what those two theories are and that there are other ones, um, but those are the two big main ones as to what happened to all these other peoples, whether Homo sapiens killed them off or whether uh, whether natural environment, uh, their inability to adapt, those sorts of things killed them off. Why they're important today, of course, is because it says a lot about who we are as people today, if indeed uh, we have this long ingrained history of violence and uh, competition, and we basically committed genocide against other human groups. So a big part of analyzing man's natural instincts or, or um, biological instincts. So general knowledge, critical thinking, um, these are pretty well laid out here. If you use your, multi your multimedia, which is what you're going to pick yourself, if you discuss the bias or the perspective and compare them of all of your sources, this is going to get you really high on critical thinking. It's going to set you up also for what you're going to be doing with the um, primary source analyses, because that's a big chunk of those as well. So general knowledge, your general history, how much actual history you use, critical thinking, how well you compare your sources and their ideas and perspectives, um, how well you can bring all of these ideas together in one place. Now, to be fair, when I'm talking about this as being one point out of the four, this is your A category right here. This is your B category. This is your C category. This is your D category. This is your F category. You don't want to be in this category right here, right? All right. Peer comments. Peer comments, you need at least three. Responding to me counts as one of those three, and I, and I, and even more. If you respond to me several times, um, then yes, you are, you are counting. I count those towards your three as well. I will point out that if I'm the questions I ask you should tell you something about your first two categories. If I'm having to ask you the question of, well, what about your multimedia? Or what does your textbook say? Or what does one of the other sources say? This means you didn't discuss them in your top post, which you should have. So that automatically means you're missing some points in your top post. How you respond to me on that in your peer comment is going to help you boost that grade. Other peer comments. 
uh, particularly to your other uh, the other students in the course. Um, what I'm looking for in those is not, oh, great, you did a good job, blah, blah, blah. That's all well and good. That's really encouraging, but that's not getting into the history. That's not getting into the critical thinking. That's not demonstrating to me um, that you are elaborating on the ideas either in that top post or in your own top post. When I grade your discussions, what I'm going to be doing is returning to you uh, a document that's going to have your top post with my comments in it, and then the three or more peer comments you've made with my comments on those. So I'm basically going to be pulling together everything you've said throughout the discussion. If all you're doing in your peer comments is regurgitating what you said in your top post, then you're not elaborating. Your peer comments are opportunities for you to expand on things that you either didn't have time or uh, understanding of in your top post. Um, this gives you an opportunity to flesh out those ideas, to include more things that uh, didn't fit in whatever your argument was in your top post, to demonstrate to me a broader sense of your understanding. Um, there are also opportunities for you to engage with your, to whomever you're responding, and to elaborate on their ideas and to demonstrate more to them about things they could have used to help support their ideas. Or sometimes, and I'm not saying you have to be argumentative, I don't encourage that, but to point out alternate perspectives. Um, if somebody's top post is primarily taken from a textbook, here's your opportunity to uh, elaborate on some of the ideas by bringing in more of Harari or the other secondary readings or other interesting things from your multimedia. So your peer comments need to be diverse, they need to be historical, they need to be using the sources as well, they must also have citation. I noticed a tremendous number of you who even responded to me without including any citation in those peer comments. Citation is mandatory in everything you submit, whether it's a discussion post, your peer comments, your primary source analyses, everything. And then citation clarity, this is the fourth category. While it is low, lowest, I am going to, in terms of the point value overall, I want to point out to you it's critical. From this point on, starting in week two, if you have no internal citation, in your post, the entire post is a zero because you're plagiarizing. Whether you intend to or not, you must give credit to the people from whom you're getting your ideas, the textbook, Harari, or what other secondary source we have, your multimedia source, anything you're using. These are not things you yourself know. So you must give credit, and you give credit at the end of the sentences where you're using information from any of your sources by including that parenthetical citation, the author's name, date, and if it's from a book, which if it's anything I've given you is from a book, the page number, right? You must, must, must have those from this point on in your discussion posts and in your peer comments as well as anything else you submit to me. Otherwise, it's a zero. I want to be very clear with that. Otherwise, it's a zero. All right, so this is how I'm going to grade. It's going to be looking at these four factors in all of your discussion posts. I'll do a separate one of these for when I'm looking at your primary source analyses, the first one of which is due at the end of next week, not this week, not week two, but the end of week three. All right, uh, I've given you examples of citation, the how and when to cite document that I will include with the email that has this video link in it. Um, Look at it, but like right here, your works cited entry, not your internal citation, your works cited entry is always in the form of author, Strayer and Nelson if you're using Strayer and Nelson, Von Sivers et al. if you're using Patterns of World History, uh, Cordes et al. if you're using one of the open stacks, Berger et al. if you're using the open uh, AIG author, title of the text, edition number, publication date, and location. If it is a book, the publication is the publisher. If you're using the online, then it's either going to be um, the overall identifying web page and then the actual link to it, right? For your internal citation, I thought I had an example of one of those in here, but again, it should be, there you go, parenthetical 
author date, if it's a book, author date, page number right here. So this is all in your discussion rubric. These are all things you should have been looking at already. So if you have questions about this, you can email me and ask me. Um, but overall, this is generally what I'm looking for in the discussions on your first discussion post. Again, when I send you that document back, I'm going to go through and I'm going to be as thorough as I can making comments to you about what you could have put in there, what you're missing. Um, again, if I respond to you, and I will respond to everybody in some capacity in every discussion, if I respond to you and I'm asking you something like, what does your multimedia say? What does textbook say? Those pretty much should be giving you a clue that you're leaving out big chunks of information or big parts of what you need in your top post. Um, your top post should have citation, internal citation, author, date, page number if it's a book, for all of the required sources, all of them. So if you don't have a work cited listing for it because you didn't cite it internally, then you're missing something. All right, again, if you have questions, email me and let me know.